Brief History of Klasky Chupo Over 25 years in the middle of Hollywood, a prominent and wildly wacky animation studio, with over 700 employees, 13 successful TV shows, 4 mega-hit theatrical animated movies, 8 Emmy Awards, 5 Cable Ace Awards, a star on Hollywood Boulevard, and two unpronounceable names, Klasky and Chupo. But who are these guys anyway? Arlene Klasky is a young American graphic designer of Polish origin living in Los Angeles, who in 1979 visited Stockholm and met Hungarian immigrant animator Gabor Chupo there. Mutual admiration and creative spark arise, and Gabor finds himself within weeks in the city of angels. One might wonder, what is a Hungarian guy doing in Sweden in the first place? Gabor Chupo was born in Budapest, Hungary in the early 50s. Being extremely artistic as a child, he always preferred a 2B pencil to a candy bar or ice cream. Fascinated and influenced by the magic of animation, he watched Disney's 101 Dalmatians 102 times in a row. As a starving young artist during the 70s, Gabor realized that he could not stomach any more the unlimited freedom and endless opportunities the communist regime so graciously provided to all of its citizens within the homeland. At the time, listening to Western artists like Frank Zappa, King Crimson, Genesis, Pink Floyd or Mahavishnu Orchestra on secret radio stations considered crimes of decadence, punishable by three years in prison while being forced to listen to the Russian anthem over and over. Gabor strangely preferred Zappa's guitar solos to Balalaika on Gulag Island. Right after serving two years in the Hungarian army, he decided with close artist friends East von Fellner, Tamara Varga, along with musicians Leslie Mandoki and Laszlo Benka, to escape to the Wild West to seek more certain fame and fortune. In 1975, at the age of 22, taking a fake vacation with red passports to Yugoslavia, Gabor and friends managed to sneak through a long train tunnel to Austria. In Vienna he gets a tip that a Swedish studio is looking for animators. The five of them managed to slip through borders of Germany and Denmark where they got captured and arrested by Border Patrol Police. The Danish cops were certain that the busted hippie suspects must have smuggled substantial drugs through their pristine border. To their big disappointment they did not find anything compromising besides dirty socks and their uniformly unpleasant body odor. The Dons very politely and very inappropriately denied the refugees' request for political asylum and very impolitely tossed them back into Germany, not even offering them their famed pastry. But the Krauts were more than generous happily embracing them with proper permits and fine shelter. After five months of eating cabbage and bratwurst in the Zerndorf refugee camp near Munich, Chupo and his two animator friends were free to head for Sweden. Mandoki and Benke decided to try their musicianship in the land of BBB, Bach, Beethoven and Brahms, and stayed in Germany. Not a bad choice, considering their future immense success in the field with Mandoki soulmates, practically hiring all of the unemployed aging musicians from the 70s jazz rock era from all around the world. In Stockholm, IKEA was never closer to home for Gabor. After cheaply furnishing his apartment and four years of animating Agat and Sachs in Team Studio, Gabor met Arlene at a bright summer party. Romance ensues during full sun at midnight. In 1980, in Los Angeles, after a few months of animating Scooby-Doo for Hanna-Barbera, Gabor talks Arlene into starting their own small animation company. First, it is in their small apartment in Hollywood. Then in 1983, they move into some industrial space to grow bigger. Commercials for Coca-Cola, Taco Bell, whipping out TV station logos, TV specials for McDonald's, music videos for the likes of Beastie Boys and Luther Vandross. In 1988 arrives a big break. The Simpsons bumpers for the Tracy Ullman primetime show on Fox Network. Upon success, Fox orders full half an hour episodes. Then, out of nowhere, Nickelodeon starts to snatch up Klasky Chupo creations like The Rugrats, Ah, uh, Real Monsters, Wild Thornberries, Rocket Power, All Grown Up, As Told by Ginger. All other major networks also jump into the game. Sesame Street Shorts for PBS, Stressed Eric on NBC, Edith Ann Specials on ABC, Sadio Bagheeta Lunches on CBS, Immigrants for Spike TV, Duckman premieres on USA Network with Frank Zappa supplying music. Then Paramount Pictures knocks on the door for some box office hits. 1998, The Rugrats Movie, grossing over $100 million at the US box office. 2000, Rugrats in Paris. 2002, The Wild Thornberries Movie. Peter Gabriel of Genesis writes music. 
Paul Simon receives an Academy Award nomination for his song Father and Daughter from the same picture. 2003, Rugrats for Wild. During all of this Gabor builds his dream house on Mulholland Drive in Beverly Hills, right across from the homes of Marlon Brando and Jack Nicholson. Chupo Lunch's G Gallery in Santa Monica. Lumpy Gravy Restaurant in Hollywood where celebrities like Madonna, Tim Curry, Peter Gabriel, the Zappa family and Bruce Willis are recurrent visitors. He also starts Tone Casualties record label featuring avant-garde electronic music by international artists, releasing over 90 albums. Chupo also produces his very own music, through the years unleashing over 20 albums of crazy electronic soundscapes. Then live action kicks in. 2006, the Walt Disney Company and Walden Media hire Chupo to direct Bridge to Terabithia. Gabor gets to work with taxi driver and raging bull cinematographer, Michael Chapman. 2008, Gabor helms the Moon Princess for UK Warner Brothers. 2017, back in Hungary, Andy Bina lures Gabor to direct Papa Pia. A critical disaster but a box office bonanza. During all of this madness, Gabor also a busy producer as a father, bringing six beautiful children to this world. First comes Jared, then Brandon, along with Ruby, Bowie, and Romeo. The latest creation is the young wildflower Kelsey, who is currently six years old. Unfortunately, in 2018, Jared passed away at age 33, losing a long battle to liver cancer. 2019, and forward, Nickelodeon Studios starts pre-production and production on 26 new Rugrats with a contemporary CGI look, Gabor Chupo and Arlene Plasky executive producing, all premiering in 2021. Well, if this was not a wild ride, then what can be? Matter of fact, this was a very brief history of Klasky Chupo, the long version would last a lifetime, for sure.